So when kings awake, they begin to realize I was created for destiny. Yeah. Not just to come and sit in some pews and sit for 20 years until you die. <laughs> you don't know years are going. Some people are church goers and pew sitters for life. Yeah. Nothing comes out of them. And when you say anything, they say, I'm giving tithe and offering. <laughs> Who doesn't give tithe and offering? Is that a ministry? <laughs> Who doesn't do it? Who doesn't do it? Come on, wake up and become somebody of relevance. Wake up and become someone of relevance. There was a lady that was listening to this, my message one time. And she said, oh, I'm just a young, she was 27 and she just had a child. And she said, but I'm just a young mom, I'm just a young mama. And now I can work uh, because, you know, she's having, uh, she was six months old child and she, she was not going to work yet. She was just going about with, the, with her kid and to the park and you know, that kind of thing. Just being a mommy. And then she heard this message. And then she said, I discovered that even as a mama, I can bring the kingdom. I can still come and rule and reign. I said, what is the idea God gave you? She said, what I discover is when I go to the park, the particular park around our uh, the estate where we live, we go to the park and go to near the river. There are a lot of mommies like me who come with their rollers and taking the children. She said, I just discovered that could become another ministry. So that is how she became a leader of a new ministry for young mommies, you know. And you, you, do you know how many young mommies we have every day in the country? In the hundreds, under the thousands. And she began to have outreaches, write letters, bring them together as a club, form an organization for young mommies. <laughs> and became a ruler over them. <laughs> there was a lady who had complications when she was pregnant. And so she had a lot of, you know, abortions before she got saved. When she came to church, she began to hear of all these messages. She said, what can I do, Lord? God said, turn your sorrow to your testimony. You used to have abortions. So she started an organization, a whole national organization that is called ministry. It's not called ministry. Organization to pregnant women. So she went and studied by internet and went to train herself in the, the whole procedure of pregnancy. How, because she used to do abortion, now she wants to take care of children, you know. And she said a lot of women do abortion because of the whole complication of getting, giving birth and pain. And they don't want to have another child because it's so painful. And so, but she wants to make it easy. So she came up with the whole doctrine of how to carry pregnancy and give birth without pain or with minimum pain. So she became like a unique class for pregnant people without delivery without pain. So a woman that she, she was not even educated, she doesn't have education or anything, she just went for training. Now she has a whole organization. <laughs> and tell me, find out how many people getting pregnant in the country every, every day or every year? They are in the thousands. That's how she became kings over them. There is something buried in all of us if, we only wake, if, if the kings only wake up. Are you listening to me? Now, let me show you another scripture here. Psalm 115. Psalms 115. Verse 16. When kings wake up, they rule the earth. When kings wake up, they, manage, they become the managers of the earth. They take responsibilities for the whole earth. They do what? Take responsibilities for the whole earth. They take responsibility for the whole earth. They begin to rule. Because if you are a king and you don't rule, what is the good of it? Kings must rule. Kings must reign. And tonight I'm going to talk about that. What makes kings to reign? That's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Why, how could the king reign? What is the instrumentality by which kings reign? That's tonight. But right now, Psalm 115, verse uh, 16. 
Psalms 115, verse 16 says. Now listen closely. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. All right? Now, but listen carefully to the next passage. I mean, to the next, to the, to the second half of that passage. But the earth has he given to the children of men. Now it says the heavens, even the heavens of heavens, are the Lord. But when it comes to the earth, when it comes to the earth, the earth has he given to who now? I, don't, I can't hear you now. To who? To the sons of men. We are supposed to be, just like God is ruling over the universe, over the heavenly places, he's expecting us to rule and manage the earth for him. It is a shame and a disgrace when the only thing a local church does is to come together and sing good songs and go home to, just to come back the next week, the following week, and come together and sing a, a good song again and say, oh, I think this message this week is better than last week. <laughs> oh, that other preacher was a good, better speaker. And you do that for the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, yeah. and the better you, you die. Yeah. How could God create you and the church just for that? Yeah. What an insult. Yeah. 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 Whereas God is sitting in heaven and saying, my. Yeah. Look what, I expect, what I'm expecting you to do. What are you doing? You have substituted, you have substituted rulership, kingship, and kingdom into religion. You have turned the whole thing into a religious process. This is what I was, what is why I was fighting the Pharisees. That's exactly what you have turned my name to. You just, it's just about coming to church again. You, you've missed me. You've missed the mark. You missed it. You missed it. I needed you to manage the earth for me. It is my creation. It is not Satan's creation. I need my children to manage it. Not Satan's children. But my children are locked up in them judges. So Satan's children have to manage it. But it is mine. The earth is still the lost, my friend. Yeah. But my kids, I will never be able to get my kids out there. My, my kids out there to go and take charge. My kids are satisfied at just making a living. Getting some little salary somewhere. And then getting excited in church. The church, you know what the church has become? The church has become... A self-gratifying -grat organ. They've sold out the earth. It's not just, it's not just Adam that sold out the earth. The church today, we're selling it, we're giving it out. We don't even contend for it. But I told you that my kingdom is by force, by contention, You've got to contend. Go contend for the earth. Take it back from me, somebody. That's what Pastor Brian was trying to tell us yesterday. It's about ruling for God. It's about the kingdom of God. It's not about church. He says, well, I'm not telling you, I'm not challenging you to go to heaven to try to rule the heavens. He said, but when it comes to the earth, my friends, it is a sin of irresponsibility to neglect the earth, to, neg to neglect the politics, to neglect the economy, to neglect the earth, the entertainment world, the sports world, and say, that is worldly. But he said, I am king, which I just told him. Are you the king? He said, I am. So they sent him to that. Now we are denying that. And we say we are a church. May some kings wake up today among us. 
Let the zeal of the Lord awaken somebody here today. Get some zeal to take some part of the earth back to God. Be it economy, be it sports, be it anything. Let the zeal of God come upon you to take back something so that you have a testimony and tell God, I am not barren. I brought you some glory. And you don't need to be a preacher to do that. Just be, go and use whatever talent, gift he has given you. Add the best the word could offer. Add the best knowledge of the Bible to it. And aim to be the best in there. So that the glory of the earth will be returned to my master. You know what we do when we neglect the earth for the unbelievers to manage? We are giving the glory that belongs to my Jesus that he died for. Giving it out to the world. In Psalms, I mean in Isaiah, let, let's open our Bible to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 42. Isaiah 42 verse 8. Isaiah 42 verse 8. It says, I, I am the Lord. Are you listening? I am. Hey, listen closely. I am. Hey, believe it, my friend. I am. It is me who is the Lord of the whole universe. I am the one who is supposed to be. I am. Hey, friends. Not Satan. Not the political system. Not the liberals. Not Hey, listen close. I am still supposed to be in charge. I am the Lord. Then he says, that is my identity. That is my name. And see, look, see what? My glory will I not surrender or give to another, neither my praise to graven images. You see, you know what the glory of God is? All the creation is his glory. And he's saying, I am supposed to be the Lord. But my glory has been subjugated, has been given. I will not allow this to happen. Don't let this happen just before my face, right before my eyes. Don't undo and deliver my glory. The graven images. So people who don't have ears or eyes, don't give my glory. Don't give the world that I created in my beauty. Don't give it up. Don't exchange my, don't, don't give my creation, which is my glory. Don't give it to the world. Don't give it to the unbelievers. Don't, give, don't sell out my glory. Fight for my glory. It is you I crown with that glory. You remember, he said, who is man? I've crowned you with that. It's supposed to be your crown. If you're not taking it back, if you're not fighting for it, what I'm giving you, what I gave you, you give it now. And it's a shame. That's why kings must away. 